What's up everyone, my name is Arthur West and today I'm gonna to show you how to remix items from Pinterest into your own site under your own name and brand. This is really exciting and it allows you to curate your own feed of things that are interesting to you and your audience. This could be physical products, digital products, or anything in between. Let's go. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Really excited to show you today how to curate items from Pinterest into your the.com site. We've created an account so we can just go ahead and click start building. If you haven't done so, you can just create a free account at the.com. This is gonna bring up all of my existing projects. The one that we're working on today is right here so I can just go ahead and hit edit site. So there's some basic information already in our site. I'm just gonna give you a high overview of what we've done already and then really focus today on this workflow and how bringing in the data from Pinterest all works and how you can map it to your site like this. So we brought in a simple header here. This was from a remixable block in the.com's gallery of remixable blocks, which is really cool. We'll give you a quick preview there, but there's everything from headers to footers to navigations to sliders to forms, anything else that you could really need to bring into your site. You can also, of course, build everything from scratch if you prefer. So today, um, we are just gonna have a couple elements, which is our header. We already changed some of these links. Um, and the logo here as well as this button. We actually made another tutorial that shows you how you can change some of that data. If you check it out, it's on our YouTube channel. But today I'm gonna show you from this gallery what we brought in. So we brought in a couple things. We brought in this mosaic gallery right here. You would just click add to site. And then we also brought in, if you click navs right here, this turbo nav, again, we just hit add to site and it just brings this right into our project, which is really cool. So if we click our little icon down here, we can go back to the site that we're working on and we can see here in our editor that we have two blocks in our site, the gallery and then the turbo nav. So pretty cool. We have these both in here. We have one simple page that we've set up, which is our homepage. And as you can see, we've added the, the turbo nav in the gallery to our homepage. One quick thing I wanna show you is if you click this hamburger menu for the gallery, for instance, there's some attributes that you can quickly customize if you would like, like the number of columns on the desktop, mobile and tablet. We're just gonna leave this as it's set for now, but just know that you can customize some of those attributes. You can also click into, if you open the block itself rather, you can actually customize everything in this block down to the granular CSS property. So you can really change anything here. It's super cool. If you hit command K, you can quickly search for different attributes like text color, whatever you wanna do. We're not gonna get too much into details there because we've covered this in another tutorial, but just know that there's a ton of customization and flexibility available here. So if we come back into this block, another thing I want to show you is that these images, let me just see here, yep. So these images are mapped to our data sheet. We have the image mapped to column A, and then we have the link actually mapped to column B. So if we go into our sheet here, which is just our database, we have column A and B. So the image is mapped to column A, the URL is mapped to column B. We have some extra stuff in here we actually wanna delete out. You can right click and just click delete. If we go ahead and save this and go back to our page, we should just have one item here. Okay, perfect. So we've got one item in our data set. We're, we're just gonna leave that for now. For the sake of example today, we're just gonna curate some furniture items into our site. But as you'll see, when we go through, you could do this for literally any item on Pinterest or any sort of topic that you are interested in. So we set up this framework, but now we really wanna focus on how we can move this data into our site. So if we go into our into our data sheet, there's this Zapier button right here in our bottom menu bar. If we go ahead and click this, you'll see a bunch of pre-configured 
options that we can choose from like Instagram, YouTube, Google Sheets, Airtable, Twitter. These are just common ones that they see a lot, but we're gonna go ahead and click new zap here. This brings up Zapier in this light box, which is pretty cool because we don't even need to leave our project to build this whole workflow. So we're gonna go ahead and choose our trigger jet zap as being Pinterest. And we're gonna choose, now we have to choose a trigger event. So we wanna choose a new pin. This triggers when a new pin is added to a board. We're gonna choose our Pinterest account. And then we're gonna choose our board. So I've already set up, just for the sake of time, a board on Pinterest called v.com. So we'll add our pins to this board. If you had on your own Pinterest account, this would be for any board that you have set up or want to set up. So we're just gonna go ahead and choose our v.com board. Okay, the next part is just testing a trigger. So this is just making sure that this works, that we've added something to the board, which we have already done. So it pulled in this example piece of data for us. So we'll go ahead and click continue. Now that we've done that, it's gonna bring us to our next step, which is called the action. This is where we want to have the action of bringing this piece of Pinterest data into our the.com site. So we choose the.com. Our action event is sending our data to our app sheet we can go ahead and click continue. So we're gonna choose our the.com account, perfect. Okay, so we're gonna have some other options here. Operation type, we're gonna to wanna to create a new row whenever this piece of data comes through. We're gonna to have to choose our site. I have a lot of sites. This one just happens to be called Silky Editorial, which is the default name. And then we wanna choose our, so this is where we wanna choose our database, which, which database on our site do we want to send this data to? In this instance, we want to send it to Image Gallery V1. Again, this is just a default name for this data sheet. You can rename these so they're a little bit easier to find and remember, but our data sheet for this project is Image Gallery V1. We're not going to specify a row number because we just want to send it to the next available row, but this is the important part. So we essentially want to send the image data in the URL to these image and URL fields in our the.com sheet. So if we click in the image, we can actually get all these attributes that are available from Pinterest. We wanna choose the image large URL here. So let's go ahead and choose that. That's the largest image that's available from Pinterest. For this actual URL, we wanna look at what's available here and we're gonna choose this shareable URL, which was actually the URL on Pinterest. So we'll go ahead and click that, perfect. So what it's gonna do here, it's gonna bring us to the final step, which is essentially a test to make sure this all works. We should hopefully get confirmation here and it did work. A piece of data was now just sent to our the.com site. So let's go ahead and turn this on and then come back to our project. It may take a minute to actually update here and we might even need to refresh our page. So let's go out and then come back in. And there we go, it is here already. So that was super fast. And the item that we just tested from Pinterest is actually brought into our site. So let's show you how this works a little bit more. If we hop over to our Pinterest account, which we are currently logged into, and we search for some furniture. Let's say we wanna curate some modern furniture into our site and show our readers our sort of favorite picks for modern furniture. We can just click these items and add them to our the.com board. We can do this really fast. Keep in mind, you can probably also do this from a mobile app, so you can do it on the fly. You can just, if you see something you like, you can quickly add it to your board and just be done with it and then know that in the background, this workflow is happening, adding all of this data to your database, which is super, super cool. So what we're gonna do is go back here. Now, it's not showing up yet. A couple things might be going on. One, we probably need to refresh our page to get this stuff to show. And two, sometimes it can actually take a few minutes from the time that we add it to our board on Pinterest for it to actually get sent through to our site because it's just, there's just like sometimes a little bit of a delay, but certainly usually never more than five minutes. It's usually pretty instant as we we just saw. So let's go just like out to our main dashboard and come back in 
and just everything is there. So that was super fast. All of our images are coming in. They're different sizes, which is really cool. It gives you this like waterfall effect. And as we add more and more, they're gonna cascade down the page and it'll look really, this really cool mosaic. Now I wanna uh, just point out that this, uh, first of all, these cells here are draggable, so you can always resize them to fit your screen. But we can go into the sheet itself, and let's say you added something that maybe you don't want in your site anymore, or even you can add something manually here, but you can just edit the data locally right here as well. So you can right click and delete a row. You could just type in a new image URL and and um, second URL here. And I also wanna point out just with this Pinterest example specifically, this is really cool because some of the data is going back out to Pinterest, but some of these are more like a product posts, you know, actually send you to the retailer where this product is available. So for this one, it's going to Urban Outfitters. This one is going to homeary.com. So really pretty cool that we're able to send our, our uh, users to the end page wherever these products live. So this is looking really good. These image cards have the link attached to them. So if somebody were to click one of these cards, we will see it actually takes us right out to Urban Outfitters. This is really cool. There's probably a ton that you could do even with like affiliate links. You can append an affiliate link perhaps, and then that way you can get affiliate commission for people that you refer to these sites. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunity here to different do different things. Of course, because now you have the data in your own site, you can chop it up, you can filter it, you can sort it, you can reorganize it in any way that you, you see fit. You can build categories and all those types of things here. So one last thing I want to show you is you can just publish this really quickly by hitting deploy all. We're actually going to save first just to make sure all of our changes are saved. If you go ahead and hit deploy, it's caching and just like that. It's live and if you were to click this site you'd be able to visit it on the web so in just a few minutes we've built this really cool pinterest aggregator in our own site in our own domain you can map your own domain here as well and we've built something that's ours so i hope this tutorial was useful have a great day